Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for our session this evening under the leadership of our father, Reverend Christo Sanando. We've been coming your way every weekday, Monday to Friday, 7 p.m. BST and 6 p.m. GMT. And you can also check the time wherever you are in the world. And on Sundays, 11 a.m. BST, we come your way with worship. We come your way with praise. We come your way with the word of God that is able to strengthen you, that is able to build you up. And today too promises to be another great time in his presence. So I will speak and after which other branch pastors will also speak. And I want to encourage you to stay tuned and your life will never be the same. I want us to spend some time in prayer. First and foremost, I want us to pray and thank God and bless his name for his goodness and his mercy that we continue to enjoy. In Psalm 23, the Bible says, The Lord is our shepherd. What's a consolation? God being our shepherd. God being the one that takes care of us. God being the one that protects us. So we want to thank him and bless his name. Give him all the praise. Give him all the glory. Magnify his name. Exalt his name for his goodness and his mercy upon your life. Father, we thank you so much. We bless you. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory for your goodness and your mercy that you continue to show to us. We thank you, Lord. We bless you for your protection upon our lives and our families. We thank you for your guidance. We thank you for your hand that is with us wherever we find ourselves. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory glory in the mighty name of Jesus. I want us to also pray and ask for mercy, ask for the forgiveness of sins. In Psalm 86 verse 5, the Bible says, For you, Lord, are good and ready to forgive and abundant in mercy to all those who call upon you. The Bible says the Lord is ready to forgive and is abundant in mercy to all those who call upon him. Tonight we are calling upon the name of the Lord and we want to pray that God forgive you of any of your sins and have mercy on you. We need mercy. We need mercy. We need the mercy of the Lord. So we want to pray for mercy. That God will have mercy upon you. God will have mercy upon you. Whatever that you've done that has not pleased his name. We want to pray that God will have mercy upon you. Father, we pray for mercy. We pray for mercy this evening. We pray for mercy. We pray for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy on us, Lord. Have mercy on us, Lord. May your mercy speak for us. May your mercy speak for us. Whoever judgment is in place, may your mercy speak for us. In the mighty name of Jesus. Finally, we want to pray and commit yourself into the hands of the Lord. That tonight, message or tonight messages will be a blessing to you in the book of john chapter 6 verse 63 the bible says that the words that i speak unto you it is spirit and it is life there is a spiritual aspect of the words that we control to speak unto you and there's life to it we want to pray that it will minister life to your soul minister life to your spirit tonight in the mighty name of jesus father we pray we commit ourselves into your hands of god even as your words have been spoken out unto us may it minister life unto us may may the spirit O oh god of the word come and abide with us we give you all the praise we give you all the glory in the mighty name of jesus we pray amen god bless you for being part my name is samuel apj and after me there will be order branch pastors that will speak to you but today i just want to talk about something that is very dear to my heart it's about faithfulness faithfulness and uh, i believe that in this time that most of us are not able to go to church most of us are not able to meet in person to have services it is one of the things that will show our level of commitment to god will show our level of commitment to his work will show our level of commitment to his service will show our level of commitment even to our church the other day jesus told his disciples that i'll build my church and the gates of his will not stand against it if there's any project that god is still doing jesus is still doing it is the building of his church and so all attention should be attached to such a project that is dear to the heart of our lord and master savior Jesus Christ. I want us to read the scripture from 1 Corinthians, very, very popular scripture, 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 2. The Bible says, Moreover, it is required in stewards that one be found faithful. So the Bible is making us understand that the requirement of stewards is not the giftings that they have. The requirement of stewards is not the connections that they have. The requirement for a steward, it is not any talent or gift that the person possesses. But the requirement for stewards is faithfulness. And so the requirement for your service in God, the requirement for your relationship with God, the requirement for whatever that you want to do for God or whatever that God you want God to do in your life is faithfulness. And it's so important that we get this point because most of us think that we need to get something extraordinary for us to be able to serve God or for us to be able to qualify. We don't need to be qualified to come to God. 
he qualifies us even as we are serving he qualifies us even as we are fellowshipping with him the other day jesus told the parable in matthew chapter 25 about a man giving talents to three groups of people and when he came back the people that were able to give good account of themselves in matthew chapter 25 verse 21 the bible says they said that his lord said to him well done good and faithful servant you were faithful over a few things i'll make you ruler over many things enter into the joy of your lord so when the man came the man actually did not see the work that the people were put into it but all that the man saw was the output and the output determined their level of faithfulness so the man said that well done good and faithful servant I believe that that will be the crown that at the end of the day Jesus will bestow on us. That well done, good and faithful servant. Well done, good and faithful maiden. You have been able to serve as I expected you to. So one will ask, when you say faithfulness at all, what are some of the things that will be used to measure faithfulness? The first thing that I will say is that faithfulness means to be careful or fulfill a promise or to be reliable. So when you say faithfulness, for some time now, everyone has been teaching us about prayer. And giving us all the types of prayer, long prayers, loud prayers, prophetic prayers, and all that. One thing that we need in our work with God is prayer. And one thing that will help us to be very to be able to have a very strong fellowship with Him is faithfulness. And the faithfulness in our even our prayer is that we do it consistently. Another word for faithfulness is dedicated in carrying out duty. So when it comes to the prayer that we have been told, it's about being dedicated. It is not checking in and checking out every month. So you do some long prayers like six hours, like an all night, and you think you are true for the for the month. No, but it's being dedicated to it day in, day out. That is faithfulness. And another meaning of faithfulness is being diligent to something. Diligent to what? Diligent to prayer. Diligent to what? Diligent to the studying of the word. Diligent to what? Diligent to even your service at work. These times that we don't go to church is a way that we'll be able to measure our faithfulness to our churches. Faithfulness to our service of God. Because like the man in the parable in Matthew chapter 25, he was not there when they were serving, but he saw the output. Now, your service might not be seen. You know, some people, some of us want to serve so that people will be giving us applause. Good, but it is not all about that. It is us being able to carry out our service diligently outside without people seeing. So now that you were serving in the usher team that no more, you're not meeting in church, how are you ashamed people to even join an online service that you join? That is diligence to his work. That is faithfulness. It is not always about doing it in, in the full glare of people to see, but doing it even when people are not seeing. Diligent in prayer. The other day, Jesus talked about people that want to pray publicly for people to give them some applause or anything. Praying secretly is very important. Diligent in it. That is faithfulness. Another word for faithfulness is punctual. Punctual. It is not when we some of us we become committed for a while then we leave then we go and all that one word for faithfulness is punctuality you continue to stay irrespective of the environment or the prevailing con conditions what matters is you being punctual to it amen another word for faithfulness is being thorough it's being thorough some of us think that we can be thorough when it comes to our private work when it comes to our school but when it comes to the things of god we just want to be shallow no it is even that place that we need to be very thorough thorough in our service thinking through making sure that the things that we want to do pleases god because it is what is the only is one of the things that god looks for being thorough making sure that no thing is left out that is faithfulness now the next one is attending church online now because you've not been going to church as in meeting but there are still services that are being held online how consistent how constant how diligent how dependable how thorough how reliable are you at that area it is very important that we don't become men pleasers but we aim at pleasing god and that if there's any tradition that we should have one tradition that we should have is the attending of church so now that there has been an evolution even now you're not able to call certain people most times but there are ways that you're able to do it let that also apply to the fellowshipping together so you 
you so you 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 log in 11 a.m. Sunday morning, 7 p.m. Thursday, Monday, Tuesday evening. You listen consciously whether you want to or you don't want to. That is faithfulness. And another area that I want to end with is doing what you were supposed to do in church. So you were an usher in church. How are you ushering now? You are not ushering people to sit by their chair, but you can usher people to join an online service. You get it? There is everything that you were doing, you can do now. And most important, I think one thing that all of us should engage ourselves faithfully in doing is mobilizing people to join online services. I tell you, during these times, people, people might be going through a lot because of the loneliness and all that. It will be an encouraging to be an encouragement to call somebody and tell the person I've been praying for you. Tell the person God is with us. We've passed, we we'll go through this. That is faithfulness. Not unto any man, but unto God. Not unto any man, but unto God. There's a scripture that I like so much in Proverbs chapter 25. There's a scripture that I like so much. Proverbs chapter 25, verse 19. The Bible says, Confidence in an unfaithful man in time of trouble is like a bad tooth and a foot out of joint. Confidence in an unfaithful man in a time of trouble. These times are not usual times. So God has placed so much confidence in you to gather his people for service, to continue to stay faithful in fellowship with him. But the Bible says confidence with an unfaithful man in times of trouble is like a foot out of joint. I don't know if you've experienced that before. Or a bad tooth. I pray that that will not be your story. That will not be my story. That we will not be in times that God is expecting us to be faithful, we will not be. And that we will continue to stay faithful so that God will look up from heaven and smile at us and say that that's my faithful servant, that's my faithful maid servant. I pray that these words bless you and they challenge you to do more for God. Not in serving alone, but building a solid relationship with Him first. In the book of Mark, chapter 3, 13 and 14, the Bible says that when Jesus called his disciples, the first reason for calling them is that they will be with him. So, first place that your faithfulness should be sure is with your personal fellowship with God in prayer, in the study of his word and waiting upon him. I pray that these words bless you and your life will never be the same. Don't change the dial or don't flip. Anointed men of God are also going to speak to you and your life will never be the same again. God bless you. Hallelujah. Today I have a word of encouragement for you, my dear sister, my brother. And the title of the word of encouragement is Do Not Be Distracted. Do Not Be Distracted. In the book of John chapter 10 verse 10, it says that the, the thief does not come except to steal, to kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. So the thief always comes to steal. He always comes. The Bible says he comes. So you find a way to come to steal you, to kill you, and destroy you. Hallelujah. So as in John chapter 16, verse 33, Jesus says something about it. These things I have spoken to you that in me you may have peace. In this world you have tribulations. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Jesus said, I have overcome the world. In this world we are going to have so many issues, tribulations, problems, challenges here and there. But the Bible says clearly that Jesus said, I have overcome the world. So be of good cheer. So in other words, you don't have to worry about anything whatsoever comes your way. You just have to focus on Jesus. The beginner and the finisher of everything in our lives. Just focus. Don't let the thing that the enemy is going to do distract you from the attention you have to give to Jesus. Don't let the things that he is going to bring on your way to distract you from the things of the Lord. Remain focused. Pay attention to the word of God. Pay attention to Jesus. Pay attention to everything that you are doing in your life. He said, be 
of good cheer because I have overcome the world. There will be so many things. From the time of Adam to date, there have been so many people who have been what? Distracted by problems, by challenges, and whatever comes their way. Hallelujah. One day a brother looked at me. I was evangelizing. He looked at me and he said, I have so many problems. That's why I don't go to church. And I said to, my, I said to the brother, I said, brother, do you understand the signs of the times we are living in? You have to understand the times and the signs, the signs of the times we are living in. Once you understand the signs of the times you are living in, you will be able to focus on the things yeah, you are doing. You will be able to focus on the things of the Lord. Hallelujah. Understanding the times of the, of, of the times we are living in is very, very important. In the book of Chronicles, chapter 12, verse, first Chronicles chapter 12, verse 32, the Bible says, The sons of Issachar had understanding of the times to know what Israel ought to do. Hallelujah. They were not distracted by the death of King Saul, but they understood the times they were living in. Hallelujah. So they went to King David. They went to David to be their king. They went to David to ask David to be their king. They were not distracted by any other thing because they understood the time they were living in. My dear sister, my brother, do not be distracted by whatever comes your way. Today, tomorrow, tomorrow next. But the Bible tells us clearly that there will be so many tribulations. And the enemy comes to steal, to kill and to destroy. That is the main reason he's on this earth to create troubles and problems for us. But if you understand the times we are living in, you'll be focused, you'll not be distracted. You'll not be distracted because of COVID-19 or because you've lost your job so you don't know what to do, you don't want to look for another job or because maybe something happened, has happened to you or because for some time now you've not been going to church Oh, you don't study your Bible anymore. No. Understand Understand the times. This is the time that we have to be home. This is the time that people are losing their jobs. This is the time people, so many things are happening. But what I want to tell you today is that remain focused. Remain focused. Do not be distracted from the plans you have for your life. Your future plans, your aspirations, do not be distracted by the things you see outside, by the things people tell you. No. But remain focused. Remain focused, first of all, on the word of God. Remain focused on Jesus. Jesus. Remain focused on the things that you are, you are aiming to achieve in life. Hallelujah. That's what Jesus said. He said, be of a good cheer. Because I have overcome the world. So whatever we are going through today, yesterday, and whatever is ahead of us, Jesus said, I have overcome it. So just be brave. And focus. Amen. Amen. I want to use one person in the book of the book of First Samuel, chapter 17, verse 28 to 30. It talks about the fact that David was sent to his brothers when his brothers were going to fight a man, a man called Goliath. The Bible says when he got there. His brothers asked him, what are you doing here? You were a child, you are not supposed to be here. The time was there for David, time for him to take the life of what? Of Goliath. But his brothers tried as much as they could to distract him. From the very purpose God sent him there. They tried as much as possible. They took him to Saul. Saul said, oh, then I have to give you my coat. You are just a child. My, my, my warrior, a helmet and all that. And he said, I don't need it. Distraction. Distraction. Don't allow yourself to be distracted. From the very things that you can do. For the very things that you can achieve. Hallelujah. So David remained focused. He said, yes, I'm a child. 
But no, I can face Goliath. He did not allow the brothers, their sayings and their, all their plans and their accusations on this and distracted him. He remained focused and faced Goliath. Imagine if David had allowed himself to be distracted by his brothers and people around him. Who, the, who would have killed Goliath at that time? He remained focused. And the Bible tells us that he took the life of Goliath. Hallelujah. He won the battle for the whole nation. So remain focused. Whatever battle is, the Bible says he has overcome it. Jesus said, I have overcome it. He has overcome the world. The challenges in the world, everything in the world, he has overcome it. So be of a good cheer. Whatever is going on, whatever plans we had from this year, nobody, nobody thought that COVID-19 is going to show up in the year 2020, beginning of the year 2020. He's here with us. Are you going to abandon your plans? Are you going to abandon your aspirations? No. Because of COVID-19. No. Don't. Focus. Focus. Do not be distracted. Remain focused on the things that you want to achieve. Hallelujah. So in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 16 verse 9, Paul says something. He said, For the for for a great door, an effective door has been opened to me. And there are so many adversaries. So anytime doors open for you, for children of God, there are so many adversaries that comes in our way. People will accuse you, people will talk, be saying all sorts of things. Hallelujah. Whatever great door has been opened before you, maybe you want to get married. Maybe something else. Focus on it and keep on praying. Hallelujah. Focus on it and keep on praying. Don't let the, the gossips and the, the sayings and all these things distract you from it. Maybe you want to apply for a new job because people are not, people are losing their job. Oh, hey, people are losing their job. So maybe if I apply for don't get a job, you'll get a job. You get it. Just apply, focus on whatever you want to. Hallelujah. Amen. When you read the book of, book of Psalms. 34 verse 19, he says, Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him from them. Hallelujah. Many are the afflictions. Many are the problems. Many are the things that will come on our way, but the Lord will deliver us. The Lord will deliver us. That's the word of God. The word of God is truth. The Lord will deliver us. So please focus. Don't be distracted. Because of the situation, don't be distracted because of the challenges we are going into. Don't be distracted because of what your mom or your dad or somebody will say to you. Remain focused on the good things ahead of you. Hallelujah. In the book of Acts, chapter 3, verse 2 to 6, when Peter was going to the to the to the temple to pray with John and they met the man who was uh, was who was disabled and asked for arms and gold and Peter said hey arms and gold we don't have so verse 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 4 to 5 Peter said look at this so he asked the man to pay attention to them focus on this don't look at the people moving around you but focus on us so the man gave them his attention expecting to receive something from them and Peter told the man to look at them not any other person. Hallelujah. Are you paying attention to Jesus? Or you are being distracted because of COVID-19? Are you paying attention to your the plans you have? Or you are being distracted because of situations and problems? Or because of the job you've lost? Or because of something that is happening around you? Or a situation or a small problem? Do not be distracted. Do not be distracted. That is my word of encouragement for you. Do not be distracted. This thing too shall pass. So do not be distracted at all. So the man gave his attention to Peter and John. He focused on them. He did not take his, his eyes away from Peter and John. He focused on them completely. And lo and behold, he was healed from the infirmities. Hallelujah. So it means that if this man had 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 distracted himself, has allowed himself to be distracted by people walking about or looking at him or something, probably would have missed his healing. 
his deliverance. But he remained focused on Peter and John. He paid attention, every necessary attention they needed from him to Peter and John. And he received his healing. Hallelujah. So don't give up because of COVID-19. Don't give up because of any challenge that you are going into. Don't give up because of any situation that you are encountering now. Don't give up because of something that will come on your way tomorrow, tomorrow, next. Or next month, not two months. The Bible says that he has overcome the world. And the Bible says that clearly, clearly. It says there are many, many are the afflictions. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. But the Lord delivers. The Lord will deliver us. So don't be scared of the challenge. The Lord will deliver it. Don't be scared of COVID-19. The Lord will deliver it. Don't be scared of the, Lord, the job we've lost. Don't be scared about accusations and here and there. Don't be scared about gossip and here and there. Focus. Focus. Focus on your plans. Focus on the good things. Focus on Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. And the last one I want to talk about, when you read the book of Numbers 21 verse, Eight to nine, it talks about uh, when when the uh, the Israelites on the on the, on the journey to the promised land and and they, they sinned against God and there were snakes everywhere around them uh, uh, biting them and here and there and people were dying. They complained to Moses and God asked Moses to 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 make uh, to make a, a serpent, a bronze serpent, and God Moses made a bronze. And God said, just just put him somewhere. And tell your people that whoever is bitten by this snake, you should focus. You should lift his eye, eyes up and look at the snake or the bronze snake. Hallelujah. In other words, God was telling them, don't look at the problems around you. But look at the snake, the, snake, the bronze snake that can save you. Don't look at the situation, the snake that is walking around you, bite, beating you and here and there. No. Don't look at that one, but look at the one that can save you. Hallelujah. In other ways, don't look at any challenge that you are going through now. But focus on Jesus who can deliver you. Focus on Jesus who can give you life and who can give you good things that you want. Who can guide you and protect you through our situations and problems. Focus on him. And don't, do not be distracted. Why should I focus on Do not be distracted from the plans you have for yourself. Don't give up remain focused and the Lord will be with you. He will make a way where there seems to be no way. God bless you and remain focused. Amen. My name is Minister Karen and I bring you greetings from CICC Hall. I'd just like to thank uh, Reverend Chris for the opportunities that he's given to me and the other pastors to share something with you tonight. Um, but before I go any further, I'd like to also pray. So if you wouldn't mind buying your heads. Heavenly Father, I thank you for the opportunity for us to gather together as a church, Lord. I thank you for the opportunity to share something with your people tonight, Lord. I pray that in the next few minutes you'll speak through me and that the words I speak bring wisdom, understanding, and light. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I pray that you continue to protect us even in these interesting times we find ourselves in. In the name of Jesus Christ, I prayed. Amen. Amen. Now, I want to share with you something i call hidden treasure it's a sermon called hidden treasure hallelujah now i want us to read our bibles matthew chapter 13 verse 44 matthew 13 verse 44 the bible says again the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure hid in a field the which when a man hath found he hideth and for joy thereof goeth and selleth all that he hath and buyeth that field amen in this verse, Jesus is likening the kingdom of heaven. He's describing the kingdom of heaven as treasure that is hid in a field. My question to you is, what are you hiding? What are you hiding? Amen. Now, what does it mean to hide? To hide means to put something out of sight, to place something out of sight. It's not out in the open. Many of us, our kingdom activity and our kingdom business, our, our activity is only demonstrated outwardly. There's nothing is hidden. Our kingdom activity only consists of, you know, going to church, maybe singing in a choir. You only pray when it's time to pray in church. You only read the word when it's time that the word is being preached in church. Those are the only times that your Bible is being opened. Or the only time you pray is when we're all praying together. Now, the, what Jesus is saying that the kingdom of heaven is unto hidden treasure. 
hidden treasure. So really and truly to obtain that hidden, to obtain that treasure, you have to search for it. You have to search for it. It's not out in the open. It's something that you find. And I just want to share some tips <laughs> on obtaining that treasure. Bible says in Matthew chapter 6 verse 5, when Jesus was giving, you know, principles on prayer in verse 5, he said, when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray in the synagogues and standing in the corners of the streets, that they may appear and may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have the reward, but thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut the door, pray to thy father which is in secret, and thy father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. Amen. Many of us yeah, we pray in church, which is a good thing. I'm not saying that praying in church is a bad thing, but we don't pray in secret. We don't seek God in secret. We don't even read, you know, the Bible for ourselves in our secret places. The Bible says in verse 6 that when you shut the door of your closet and you are praying to your father in secret, the father he sees in secret rewards you openly. Amen. He rewards you openly. You really obtain um, the hidden treasure when you pray in secret and when your kingdom activities are done in secret. I want to encourage you to read the word, to study the word in secret, to pray in secret. Matthew 6 verse 16, the Bible says, Moreover, when ye fast, be not as the hypocrites, the sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces that they may appear unto men to fast. Verily I say unto you, they have the reward, but thou, when thou fast, Anoint thine head and wash thy face, that thou appear not unto men to fast, but unto thy father which is in secret, and thy father which is in secret shall reward thee openly. Oh, many people, when we are fasting, we like for people to know that we're fasting. You know, we like for people to know we come, you know, walking a few paces slower, slowly, you know, walk a bit slowly than we usually would. We do our faces some way like, oh, <laughs> everybody can tell. Even when people try to touch you, it's like, oh, calm down, calm down. I'm a, I'm a bit weak right now. Amen. But what Jesus is encouraging us to do is do it in secret. <laughs> Wash your face. Cream your face. Don't let people know. Don't, don't, don't make it obvious. Don't make it obvious. It's a secret affair. Fast in secret. Because the God that sees in secret rewards you openly. Amen. Now, many of us use our ability to hide and our ability to place things in secret for bad things. We like to hide garbage. <laughs> Instead of hiding treasure, we hide garbage. Nobody knows how many boyfriends you have. Nobody knows how many girlfriends you have. Nobody knows what you were watching on your phone last night. Nobody knows the music you were listening to because you're able to hide it so well. You're able to hide it so well. Instead, you know, in verse 17, Matthew 6, 17, the Bible says, But thou, when thou fast, anoint thine head and wash thy face, so that it appear unto men, so that you don't appear unto men to fast. So it's like, but Jesus encouraged us to hide the fact that we're fasting. Some of us, instead of hiding that, we hide the bad things we're doing. We hide, we hide. You come to church on Sunday, but nobody knows where you were the night before. Nobody knows what you were doing even an hour before. Amen. Nobody knows because we're using the ability to hide from bad things. Let, let me also give you another tip. It's better to expose those bad things so you can be free from them. The Bible says in John 1 verse 5 that the light shine bright in the darkness and the darkness comprehended not. I'm in a room now. If you take a room with rats and roaches, uh, this room doesn't have that. But if you take a room with rats and roaches, if you turn on the light, they will disappear. Do you understand what I'm saying? If you turn on the light, it will, it will disappear because they don't like the light. But when the light is not there or when it's hidden, it allows them to grow. They, they can have children. They can have even generations living there. The light is never turned on. Do you understand what I'm saying? But when you turn on the light, you expose them. When you expose the bad things you're doing, it's, it's like it's there. It's out in the obvious. And when you expose it to like your pastor or a shepherd or a leader, you are able to receive healing. The Bible says in James 5, 16, confess your sins one to another and pray one for another that he may be healed. When you expose it, that's how you're able to solve the issue, solve the problems instead of hiding it and letting the bad things linger. It's amazing. The good things that we should hide, we don't. The bad things, it's the bad things we hide. We like to hide the bad things. Amen. And that even leads to pride because it's like nobody knows the bad things you're doing. So it's like you can even look down and like, oh, I'm a very prayerful person. I, I pray. Look at me. As in verse 16, you know, they do their faces some way. Oh, shut up. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Just so that they appear unto men to fast. 
But what, what, what reward can men give you? What reward can men give you except from a well done? Oh, oh wow, you're powerful. What reward can they give you? Do you understand what I'm saying? It's the, heaven, it's the rewards from God that will really advance you. Nobody knows how, but because of your secret prayers and because of the prayers in your closet, you are becoming anointed. Because of your the prayers and your reading of the word in your secret place, you are becoming more anointed. You're more effective in ministry. You're prospering. Things are working out for you. You are changing. And nobody knows how. Do you understand what I'm saying? Begin to do good things in secret as well. Instead of bad things. Instead of hiding things. Amen. And I believe that is when you start to see a change in your Christian walk. That's when you start to see a change. My name is Minister Kieran, and I hope this message has blessed you. And I hope you take care of yourself. Thank you and bye-bye.